I think that Donald Trump will implement some significant deregulation, especially in financial sectors. And obviously, we are seeing this shift from uh, uh, monetary easing to fiscal easing. So, in a way, it's a new world, but a lot has already happened in markets. I think, in general, what the, the Trump administration is trying to do is to reflate the, the U.S. economy. So, basically, all sectors of the economy will, will benefit. We think that the way the policies of, of Trump are kind of uh, are structured. I think the corporate sector will benefit the most. There will be corporate uh, tax cuts, there will be probably some incentive to invest more. Um, so I think in that sense, yes, the producers will benefit more than the consumers under Trump. You know, inflation has been going up all year. Uh, if you look at the Fed uh, preferred measure of inflation, we are pretty much close to 2%. Wage growth almost 4% on some measures. So it's already happening. What the Trump administration will probably do is to push growth even higher, and this will generally be more inflation, and the Fed, uh, I'm afraid, will be forced to, to hike probably a little bit more than we assumed just a few weeks ago. As always, when you reflate the economy, you generate growth, well, monetary policy tend to offset that. And because the Fed fund rate is so low, actually lower than, than it should be, the risk is that the Fed will be forced to normalize rates faster, and then obviously is a big risk for markets that has been used to live in a period of ample liquidity, and so that's, that's a risk which will offset the positive side of, uh, of reflation coming from the U.S. I think for equities is a difficult, uh, is, is, is a very difficult environment in a way because you have positive growth, positive earnings growth, but probably multiples being under pressure because of uh, falling liquidity. But we expect markets to be ma marginally positive next year, pretty much like this year, with Japan doing much better than the rest. For, for bonds, we have already seen a lot. Uh, we still believe that bond yields will rise a little bit more, higher inflation, higher growth. But we feel that Europe is more vulnerable to our bond yields because the ECB will taper, this is not priced in, and actually the level of bond yields is much, is much lower than the US. So I think we see more risk for bond yields to rise in Europe than, than we see in the US. Well, in a way, growth will still remain relatively weak, but you're going to see an acceleration. So I think because of that, I think what we want to do is to be exposed to sectors that will benefit from rising bond yields, and they still offer some decent valuations. And I think the sector that comes to mind is financials. Uh, we have seen in the last few years, financial haven't done particularly well, and should be the biggest beneficiary of that. Some defensive sectors look interesting to us, like pharma, but again, they're not apart from a few exceptions, cheap enough, and if you have a rise in bond yields, all the bond property will still be a little bit under pressure. So I think, again, cheap, uh, cheap valuation, some cyclicality, and some pharma stock will do the job. What we see is that um, because of this long period of very easy, um, significant monetary easing, almost all asset classes are expensive. We see a lot of dispersion, though, in terms of valuation within each asset class. For example, if you look on, uh, on regions, we see very, very cheap valuation in emerging Europe, in Japan, in continental Europe, and very expensive valuation, for example, in LATAM in the US. So we, we, we look at and in terms of sectors, the two extremes, now our industrial look very expensive and telecoms and financial they look cheap. So I think we, we want to be exposed in a way to these very cheap sectors and very cheap regions. We feel that from a structural point of view, the situation in the emerging market looks much better than a year ago. Commodity prices now are picking up. We see more reforms. Think about Argentina, Brazil, Indonesia, even Saudi Arabia. Uh, and we see actually improvement in earnings. Uh, the problem, though, is that the emerging markets still remain ex very, very vulnerable to a change in the monetary policy in the U.S. Uh, we see interest rates uh, going up in the U.S. The dollar potentially overshoot in the short term. So I think it's probably too early to be optimistic on emerging markets. But we think that the outlook over the next two or three years are definitely improved. So any weakness, significant weakness for us would be a good buying opportunity for them. Well, you know, if in our scenario the biggest risk is not there is a significant deceleration uh, in growth. The biggest risk uh, you're going to get a significant, or let's say the Fed fund rate uh, going up too much, inflation going up too much. So in that environment, what you want to have, you want to have sectors, regions, and asset classes that will do well in a rising uh, rate environment. So I think Japan, in that sense, would actually help you. Um, I think you see that to have some exposure to VIX, so you need, you need to be exposed to, to volatility, because volatility will rise. And I have to say that even if you have been very bullish on inflation-protected bonds, uh, I think going forward, given what, what, what happened in the last few weeks, we start to think that gold 
could be actually one of the best hedge uh, in, 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 in the short to the, to the long term.